Association of Independent Congregations of the Unitarian Universalist Churches, blah, blah, blah. But in real terms, the Unitarian Universalist Association you know, presents itself as the sort of the official leadership uh, of the Unitarian Universalist religious community, not only in terms of North America, but internationally, certainly in terms of the American Canada at the time and earlier, a uh, very, very close relationship between the Canadian Unitarian Council and the Unitarian Universalist Association, and there still is a very close association. You know, most Canadian Unitarian Universalist churches have Americans as ministers. Most of the ministers are, are American citizens. In fact, off the top of my head, I, I'm not aware of any Canadian citizens uh, who are Unitarian Universalist ministers at the moment. Uh, there might be one or two, I just don't know who they are. But I can tell you one thing is, is uh, Reverend Diane Roller, to the best of my knowledge, isn't one of them. Um, it's possible that she has dual citizenship. It's possible that she did at some point become a Canadian citizen, but, but she's basically an American. She hails from uh, south of the border. Um, and so, like I said, she's one of the many <coughs> American Unitarian Universalist ministers who are ministers of Canadian Unitarian Universalist churches. Uh, so it's very much... Uh, an American import uh, into Canada, Unitarian Universalism. Uh, there's only around 40 or so Unitarian Universalist uh, congregations spread across Canada. There's three in Quebec, uh, two in Montreal. There's this one, the Unitarian Church of Montreal, which was the first in uh, Canada, I believe. I, I, I could be mistaken, but I think the Unitarian uh, Church of Montreal, obviously not this building, which is very modern, uh, was the first Unitarian church in Canada. Um, certainly one of the earliest. I believe it was established in Montreal in the 1840s, so quite a while ago. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, that, that's it. Again, we're, we're, we're basically talking about, about, you know, essentially how American uh, Unitarian churches are, you know, even the Canadian ones, uh, and again, closely affiliated. They did officially separate at some point in the 2000s. Um, you know, there was a time when, when the Canadian Unitarian Council was essentially a, a branch of the Unitarian Universalist Association, uh, but uh, what it turned out is that the Unitarian Universalist Association no longer needed the Canadian Unitarian Council for money laundering purposes, and so they dumped them. <laughs> that's, that's the short, not so sweet history uh, of what happened. Uh, that's basically the real reason why the uh, Canadian Unitarian Council uh, separated from the uh, Unitarian Universalist Association, became independent, you know, in quotation marks, from the Unitarian Universalist Association. That's, that's what it comes down to. The, Unitarian Universalist Association was using the Canadian Unitarian Council to launder money. Um, essentially what it came down to is there were some trusts uh, that were you know, bequeathed to the Unitarian Universalist Association, uh, but that these trusts had uh, you know, clauses in them uh, that essentially said that the money in them had to be spent on charitable purposes outside of the USA. So the, the whole purpose of these trusts, you know, which were bequeathed to the Unitarian Universalist Association by, you know, people who died and left things to the UUA, um, you know, they, they clearly stated that they were meant for charitable, pur charitable purposes outside of the USA. But the Unitarian Universalist Association, you know, they, they wanted that money. So what did they do? They sent money from these trusts up to the Canadian Unitarian Council in the guise of a donation to a foreign, you know, charitable cause. 
<clears throat> and then after doing some uh, fundraising, the Unitarian Universalist Association uh, sent the money back to the UUA. So, classic case of uh, money, money laundering there. So, uh, and that's that. Uh, person who uh, came out of the church earlier and has been sort of lingering uh, uh, is not David Rollert. I thought it was David Rollert, <clears throat> but uh, apparently not. Somebody a face I'm not familiar with. He was uh, brushing the snow off of the uh, black car there, and uh, I did think it might be David Rollert. Uh, but turns out not to be someone else. Um, but yeah, he's been sort of lingering and uh, keeping an eye on things, looking at the picket signs. And he definitely did come out of the church, so he's someone associated in one way or another with the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Um, so anyhow, uh, we'll just continue our little protest here. I'm not going to protest uh, all that long today. It's nice to see the sun popping out from behind the clouds. Uh, um, it was a little cloudy earlier, but uh, now we've got the blue sky above us and around us. You know, there was some blue sky earlier, um, but uh, there was a fair bit of cloud and the sun was behind uh, the cloud for a good, good while, but it seems to have risen above it. Um, so yeah, we'll just look at some of the freestanding picket signs here. Unitarian Universalist liars bear false witness against me. Well, they've been doing that from the very beginning of this dispute. You know, this dispute arises out of Reverend Ray Drennan and Frank Green and other Montreal Unitarians uh, bearing false witness against me, uh, slandering and libeling me. Um, and uh, I complained about that. And it was essentially condoned by not only the Unitarian Church of Montreal, uh, but uh, the Unitarian Universalist Association, to say nothing of the Canadian Unitarian Council. Um, I sent uh, copies of my complaint against Reverend Ray Drennan uh, for slandering an interreligious event that it organized as a cult and labeling me as psychotic. Uh, because I'm claiming a quite profound religious experience um, and a couple of other things, but those are the two main issues, you know, the slandering of a quite successful interreligious uh, event that brought together, uh, you know, a good number of, of Montreal uh, religious communities. Uh, uh, this was slandered as a cult by uh, Reverend Ray Drennan. Um, and other Montreal Unitarians. Uh, Frank Green, the president of the board of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, had made snide comments uh, suggesting that it was a cult, uh, but he never actually used the C word, but he, he basically implied. And uh, Ray Drennan, uh, uh, part of his defense for, for labeling Creation Day as a cult was uh, you know, he essentially told me, well, I'm not the only one here. I'm not even the first, you know, like other people are saying this. So, so it's not just me. <laughs> and I believe that. I do believe that. I, it's, uh, you know, based on the fact that uh, Reverend Ray Drennan wasn't even minister of the church when uh, Frank Green first insinuated a link between uh, Creation Day and uh, Dangerous Cult. Um, um, you know, I, I think uh, that originated uh, before uh, Ray Drennan even showed up. But he, you know, in his capacity as minister, used that word in a quite intolerant and abusive manner. Um, and so I saw a retraction and an apology and better behavior from Reverend Ray Drennan. Sent copies of my complaint that was delivered to the UA. Sorry, not the UA. Uh, sent to the uh, the you know my my complaint, my letter of grievance was delivered to the uh, board of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Uh, but I sent copies down to uh, the president of the UA at the time, uh, Reverend Doctor John A. Burens, um, and I also sent copies to the Canadian Unitarian Council whose president's name is escaping me at the moment. Might be Slattery or Slatery, but it could be another name. Uh, but in any case, 
the Canadian Unitarian Council and the Unitarian Universalist Association presidents each received copies of my complaint against Reverend Ray Drennan. And the whole idea is I just I just wanted them to oversee the situation, make sure that it was properly handled by the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Well, they did no such thing. The Canadian Unitarian Council brushed it off. They essentially claimed, well, it's not our problem. We can't really get involved in this due to the uh, way the institutions are set up. So they didn't condone Reverend Ray Drennan's behavior. They didn't uh, pretend, you know, that his behavior was acceptable. But they essentially said, uh, our hands are tied by the rules. We can't get involved here. Uh, but that's not quite what happened with uh, the Unitarian Universalist Association. Uh, Reverend Dr. John Burens, I believe, got back to me, and what he did is he, he, he t said that he had passed my complaint along into the hands of uh, Reverend Diane Miller, who was the executive director of the Ministerial Fellowship Committee, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in any case, Reverend Diane Miller was sort of the top person responsible for dealing with uh, clergy misconduct issues. Uh, so he had told me that he, you know, passed it into her hands for her to deal with, uh, which isn't exactly what I'd been seeking. Um, and it was clear from the letter he sent to me, which was CC'd to Diane Miller, that he sort of was brushing off my complaint, sort of pretending that it didn't have any validity, you know. And so, of course, you know, some weeks or months later, uh, the executive of the Ministerial Fellowship Committee uh, got back to me. So this was Reverend Diane Miller and a few other Unitarian Universalist ministers who were the executive of the Ministerial Fellowship Committee, including one uh, Douglas Morgan Strong. Uh, they essentially got back to me and they said that... Uh, Reverend Ray Drennan's behavior, as I described it, uh, these are their exact words, seem to us to be within the appropriate guidelines of ministerial leadership. So they're essentially saying, yep, yeah, uh, Reverend Ray Drennan's behavior, as I described it, and I can assure you I described it in a lot more detail <coughs> in the letter of grievance, which went into issues beyond uh, 